In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the negative uh, psychological and emotional impacts that pornography can have on, it, on the consumer, uh, whether they be men or women. Um, there's, you know, I'm sure there's been a, a, a whole number of videos that have been done on this, um, but I thought it to be uh, relevant in the sense that I, I, I've yet to see, I haven't seen a video where someone has talked about the uh, psychological and emotional effects, okay, the negative psychological and emotional effects that it has on people, and then bring in the negative spiritual effects that it has on people. And it, so again, I, a, a lot of times um, I see a connection between the psychological and the spiritual. You know, this is, I, I guess this is one of the reasons why an exorcist will bring in a psychologist. You know, a lot of times um, demons, we know demons enter through trauma. Okay, that's just, we know that. I know that just from being in deliverance ministry as long as I have. Um, and so there, there, it can be traumatizing. Just, so there's so many tentacles to this. Um, when you begin to dissect it, it's just really hard to um, to to wrap your mind around, and so I do I do want to talk a little bit about that, um, and then um, tie in kind of the spiritual aspect of this. Um, how do I say uh, some of the things that I've seen and that I know just from being involved in deliverance ministry? Okay, so um, first of all, I'll just start off with the percentages. I do think that the number of people that are consuming pornography is starting to go down. I believe I read that somewhere. But this was a study that was done in, in 2018. Okay, so it's an, there's an estimated 91.5% of men and 60.2% of women that consume pornography. Okay, so here are some of the negative effects emotionally and psychologically that uh, pornography has on the consumer. What I will say before I begin this is that very often um, in my experience in deliverance ministry, in healing ministry, um, even in exorcism, uh, assisting the, the exorcist, a lot of these symptoms are present. And I would say that probably 90% of of the the cases I've been involved in, where there has been a you know a house cleansing or um, an oppression or an obsession, um, pornography has been present somewhere. Okay, so I have a very hard time separating the two from um, you know what the the psychologists have done and looking at the negative uh, impact it has emotionally and psycho psychologically without tying in the uh, spiritual impact that it has. Okay, so it negatively impacts relationships. Um, porn consumers, just as a whole, are more likely to experience divorce and or breakup. Okay, that's only one aspect of it. Um, the a porn someone who consumes porn tends to objectify uh, the other the partner. Okay, so it, like I say, it has an, it has a negative. It changes the way you think about people. It changes the way you see relationships, interact in relationships, all of it. Okay. Um, porn can become an addiction and we know that. So any addiction like that where, uh, you know, it becomes, um, you know, something that is controlling you rather than you being able to control it is, is really not a good thing. Okay. So, it, you know, addiction is not good, whether it be drugs, alcohol, sex, pornography, um, anything that's going to go down the immoral path or uh or alter the way the brain operates is not going to be a good thing okay spiritually we just know that uh porn can feel violence okay so pornography sexually violent narratives can bleed into consumers attitudes and behaviors okay uh, porn consumers are more likely to objectify and dehumanize others more likely to express an intent to rape less likely to intervene during sexual assaults more likely to victim blame survivors of sexual assault, more likely to support violence against women, more likely to commit actual acts of sexual assault. Okay, so the the addition to the adding pornography to your life only leads to these negative things. Now, I'm not saying every person that's ever consumed uh, pornography is going to commit rape or sexual assault. Okay, but what they found in the study is that the majority of people who commit these crimes also use pornography. Okay, 
Um, it can harm sexual function as well as make people sexually illiterate, okay? So it leads to less um, actual sex, which is not a good thing if you're married, which you shouldn't be having sex outside of marriage, but it just, it just the, the, the intimate part of the marriage is, is important. And so if it leads to less of that, that can only be bad for a relationship, okay? It also leads to less satisfying sex. Um, compulsive porn consumption is associated with sexual dysfunction in both men and women. It can warp the sexual expectations in both male and female in unhealthy ways. Um, nine in 10 porn scenes contain physical violence or aggression. 90% of the time, the targets of that violence respond either neutrally or with pleasure, sending the message that sexual aggression is normal or even desirable. Now, I want to talk about this a little bit because it, um, they're very often, well, I would say this, the majority of porn sites have issues with child pornography or, and or non-consensual sex. Okay, so even if you're looking at just an image, there is a chance that what you're looking at is an actual rape and gaining pleasure from it. And not only objectifying the people for self-gratification, but what you may be actually watching is, is, and is an actual act of violent rape of a young girl who's been trafficked um, or drugged Okay, so there's no way I'm going to get into this a little bit because, it, like I say, it's almost too much to wrap your mind around. Um, it can fuel mental health issues. A number of studies have found a link between pornography consumption and mental health outcomes like depression, anxiety, loneliness, uh, long, lower life satisfaction, poor self-esteem, and overall good mental health. Okay, and so like I said... In, in my experience in deliverance ministry, in, you know, whether we're just doing, you know, like I say, just a, a deliverance session, um, you know, for uh, an obsession or an oppression or, you know, trying to uh, allow the Lord to heal someone of an addiction. A lot of these um, symptoms, okay, like depression, anxiety, loneliness, um, low self-esteem, um, not wanting to live. Uh, these kind, these kinds of symptoms I've seen numerous times, probably 90% of the times that I've been involved um, with Father, either in exorcisms or deliverance ministry. Um, studies have found that these links are particularly, particularly strong when porn is consumed to escape negative emotions and when consumption becomes heavy or compulsive. Okay, so imagine this. You have a, a young man or a young woman who um, has been traumatized in their home um, begins to consume pornography to get rid of the negative emotions or depression that they're feeling only to lead to more anxiety, loneliness, low, self -satis uh, low, low life satisfaction, poorer self-esteem, and overall good mental health. So it's a, it, 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 and this is one of the ways it becomes addictive, okay? Because it releases chemicals in the brain that um, it's like it's like doing cocaine. And so it feels good for a minute, but then after it's over, the person feels worse about themselves or ashamed of themselves um, after after the fact. So it's like it's almost like a, you know, a, a dopamine high, you know, and but it just leads to more uh, of the same symptoms and and leaves the person actually worse off than than had they not watched it at all. Um, the porn industry has an extensive history of profiting from non-consensual content and abuse, even ignoring victims' pleas to remove abusive content. Every major porn site has had issues with child pornography. Every single one. Um, there is no way for the consumer to know for sure that what they are watching is consensual. Okay, so in other words, as I said before, if 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 someone were to consume pornography um, just compulsively or once a week or 
just look at porn pornographic pictures on the on the internet there's no for sure way to know that what you are looking at is consensual and so there is a there is a chance you know albeit probably slight and maybe not but there's no way to know that what you are looking at is consensual in other words it's it's like it's like russian roulette what you may be looking at is is a woman being raped drugged and raped whether it's a still shot whether it's just a you know a a small portion of a film or whether it's you know a a, a full on you know presentation okay so it's just something to keep in mind um porn fuels sex trafficking i think we all know that um it's been linked to adolescent dating violence and sexual aggression okay um children as young as third grade second grade i mean we know what's being taught in the schools really against our will at this point um have viewed pornography at least once and the percentages of those of those kids is high once that once that image is there you don't get rid of it you it's like uh it's like the the priests tell you or the exorcists tell you your mind files those images okay and the only way the only way to really get rid of them um is and i've given this advice to men i'll give it give the advice to women as well here spend a lot of time in adoration begging jesus to untwist the lie okay it's not impossible for those images to be removed they can be removed um i know this personally okay but once they're there they're very very hard to get rid of okay um once you see an act that way um you know according to the study the more likely you are to try and act it out with a with a girlfriend or a boyfriend or or you know your wife and i say girlfriend and boyfriend because of the society we're living in but that's what the study has found is that adolescents um who who have watched pornography um, are, are trying to act out acts of aggression and violence. In other words, react what they've seen on their girlfriends or their sex partner or their, you know, what they call friends with benefits these days. Um, adolescents are, are, it's leading to more um, dating violence and sexual aggression. Um, in one study, 28% of 100 abused women said that their abuser used porn. Okay, the, uh, there were the other 50, there was another 50% that were abused that didn't know whether or not their abuser used porn. Okay, <clears throat> so these are some of the negative effects psychologically and emotionally. Now let's think about this for a second, okay? I, I don't know of an exorcist that would that would tell you that pornography does not open up doors to the demonic. Okay, um, it can lead to oppression, it can lead to obsession, it can lead to probably even possession. Okay, depending on what's going on. Now, if you now think about this, this is where I mean about tying things together. Let's say that a man. Uh, watches pornography he's addicted to pornography he's got some mental issues obviously uh and goes out and rapes a woman and the woman is traumatized by the rape and again we know that demons enter through trauma now i'm talking you know in the sense that the woman has no faith she's not in the church you know this kind of thing and because of that she gets addicted to drugs and this is what i i've spoken about this so many times um is the ripple effect of sin and how it affects okay let's say that um there's kids at a party okay uh high school kids at a party the girl gets too drunk the guys sexually assault her um end up raping her she's traumatized she gets pregnant and then on top of that decides she can't have the baby and decides to have an abortion well now we're talking about post-abortion trauma Okay, and, and I mean the world we live in, like I say, how many of how much of the youth, what percentage of the of the youth um, is living their faith? 
You know, the majority of college students can't tell you which ocean is on the east coast of the United States. So we know that demons enter through trauma. It's one of the ways they enter. It's one of the ways they gain a foothold and they hold on to. This is one of the reasons that um, many exorcists, okay, and we all, we, you know, I've kind of always seen the, the, uh, the right of exorcism as, as, a, um, as a, a healing process, you know, more than, you know, screaming at demons and casting them out and, you know, the way the movies see it. It's really a, a process of healing. A person you know in the same way that confession is it's a sacrament of healing okay but demons enter through trauma um, someone negatively affected spiritually by pornography can become a conduit and I've seen this happen uh, for demonic activity in a home okay we know that um, and I again I don't know an exorcist that won't tell you this that when you have sex outside of marriage that there you, there's a possibility that you're opening yourself up to anything demonic that the other person was involved in as well as may possibly opening yourself up to anything demonic that their other partners have been involved in okay so let's take a, a marriage that's not sacramental, hasn't been blessed in the church. Um, it would work. It would work the same way. If if the let's say the husband is consuming pornography, um, opens doors to the demonic, comes down with an impression or obsession, um, sleeps with his wife. It, it can affect. Um, the other people in the home, the wife, the kids, it definitely affects the guy that, that has watched it, okay? So we, in other words, we know that demon, that you can open yourself up to demonic activity through sexual intercourse, okay? That is fornication. Um, or, you know, if you're living together, you're not married, that kind of thing. Now, now, this is the point that I'm trying to make, where, again, it becomes almost too much to wrap your mind around. When you apply these psychological, emotional, and spiritual truths to the world that we live in now and, and the amount of impurity, the amount of fornication, the amount of pornography, the amount of violence, the amount of abortion, you know, what we see is, is this is what I mean by the society is spiritually psychologically and emotionally sick you know when we know that demons enter through fornication demons enter through pornography and it's not saying that they they do every single time okay um i would be i would say that watching pornography or looking at pornography or fornicating obviously you're in a state of mortal sin so you don't really have that that protection of grace um, you know, you're opening yourself up to a lot of things. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're affected by the demonic, um, but it does mean that you don't have the protection that you need um, to protect you from the demonic. And and so, you know, once it once a demon enters and that, you know, that pornography becomes addictive and addictive and addictive, pretty soon that's not enough. You know, you've got to you've got to carry out the act, or you know, you, you drink and drink and drink and drink and drink and, you know, pretty soon you can't get drunk anymore and, and then you die of alcohol poisoning, um, cocaine, drugs. It all works the same way. But all these things that we know to be sin as taught by the church, mortal sin as taught by the, by the church opens us up to demonic activity or very well can and so when you look at the world that we're living in the society we're living in the country we're living in um this is one of the reasons like i, I think i described it as a, a satanic circus and that's ex that's what it looks like to me it looks like the earth is, is covered in darkness now you know, and again, you can't contemplate these things for very long. You have to think critically and think rationally. But I mean, if that's all we're focused on, and I don't want to remain focused on it because it can just become depressing. 
you know, um, this is the reason it's so important to keep our eye on the prize. You know, so important to understand how important our role is now to to uh, make reparation, um, sacrifice, fasting, prayer, prayer for you know, praying for conversions. You know, it it is a spiritual battle being fought on an enormous level, and this is just think about it. This is just one thing. This is just pornography. You know, it doesn't. Uh, you know, I'm not, we're not bringing in greed or malice or, um, you know, deceit, um, fornication. This is just one subject is just pornography, but th that's how it spreads. That's the ripple effect of sin. We've, we've been fed this. You know, I, I, I should actually, you know what? I should look up when pornography was legalized. You know, um, I think the satanic church or the church of Satan um, is, is lobbying to abort, uh, to open abortion clinics and call abortion a sacrament. And because we have freedom of religion in the constitution, they want to legalize abortion that way. Uh, in response to Roe v. Wade. And, uh, it, well, there it is, really. You know, they say it in their own words, words. But, you know, those of us that are that are familiar um, with demons and demonic activity, we've seen it as a sacrament for a long time for the devil. It is a demonic sacrament. They're just, now they're finally admitting it. This is, uh, again, just a small portion of the effects the negative effects psychologically, emotionally of pornography. But I don't know how we can look at it as Catholics, as spiritual people, um, and not tie in the demonic. And I believe that this is a very, this is one of the main problems um, that we have in our society today is the consumption of pornography, um, the, the free for all fornication, you know, I, it's like I said that, you know, I was really naive to it until I started looking around and, and doing a little digging. But these, these kids are having sex like like they're going out to coffee. It's nothing to them. It doesn't mean anything to them. Um, you know, and, and now through feminism, you know, the women, uh, which you they would, you know, used to be a little bit more hesitant than the guys or, um, you know, their attitude now. Well, if guys can do it, why can't girls? And it, it is just absolutely destructive. Um, you, when we lose morality, we lose the foundation of a stable society. And, uh, you know, it's bad enough that, that our youth are being poisoned. It's bad enough that, um, you know, people that should know better were stupid enough to pass laws to make these things, you know, legal or okay. Um, but to have, you know, Hollywood and these, you know, pop stars and, you know, these quote unquote famous people, um, doing what they're doing and promoting what they're promoting, uh, just makes it even worse. You know, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that some of those people have, have, uh, you know, made packs with the devil for success. No, no doubt in my mind about it. Um, but anyway, this is just a, a small portion um, you can do your own research as I said do your own research and it, it's not it's not hard to tie these things together um, when you look at it from a psychological and emotional perspective and then you tie in um, the demonic um, and this and the, the reality that when we commit mortal sin we are opening ourselves up to demonic activity um, you know, I don't think there's any conclusion, other conclusion you can come to, you know. So it, it's extremely important for us to continue to pray and to um, to make reparation. You know, it, it's, it's no wonder um, that Our Lady begs us the way that she does to turn back to God and to pray with the heart, um, to receive blessing instead of chastisement. You know, um, pray the chaplet, 
every day and offer it in reparation for the sins committed by the United States and especially the sin of abortion. Uh, pray for protection uh, for this country. Um, pray for this upcoming election. You know, I don't. I know that the last video I did was on you know Obama and Trump. I don't. I don't necessarily. Um, how do I say? I'm not doing a pro a promotional for Donald Trump. Okay, um, I'm looking at what I feel is the lesser of two evils. All right. Um, I don't even know that Trump will be breathing by the time the election comes around. I don't know that I would vote for him um, if he were. Okay, there are other candidates out there, so I'm not going to get into my personal voting preferences. Um, but we need to pray for this country one way or another. We need to pray, pray, pray for this country. Um, yeah, so it, like I say, it can get it can get dark and it can kind of become depressing when you look at things like this. It's just amazing, um, almost overwhelming when you see all the different. Uh, angles that uh, Satan is operating from in today's world. So don't be afraid to, to speak out. Don't be afraid to talk to people about God. You know, um, in my experience, most people are open to it um, if it's done in love. You know, they're, they're not afraid to talk about God. As a matter of fact, the last few times that that I've brought up um, religion or God or prayer uh, to people who are are not living um, their faith or you know maybe even not even acquainted with the Bible are very open to it and I, I believe the reason for that is because especially our youth has has reached a point to where they are starving for something positive. And they're coming to the realization that the things that they filled themselves up with have actually made them more empty. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may he grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.